Hello friends, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here uh, once again. I am going to be doing something different. Um, I'm not real enthusiastic about how my last video came out to be honest with you. I want to sit here and chat with you as my friend as we sew something together that I've wanted to make for a really long time. I take some of my sewing in the car with me or to the park and I really enjoy getting out of the house sometimes and it's hard to take a machine with you and so you take your hand sewing with you. I have a little bag that I like to carry stuff in but it's kind of awkward to carry and so I wanted to make this housewife pattern. It's by Willoughby and Rose. Uh, off of Etsy. I'll link it down below. Um, I've had it for, like I said, quite a while and I want to make it. I've been gathering the fabrics for a while that I think would work really, really well together, but I'm not like completely settled on the fabrics that I want to use. I, I want to use them all. <laughs> so I'm going to just take you in here with me. I, I'm going to show you that I'm trying to decide on the fabrics and what's going to work well and how I want to put it together and what I'm going to use and we're going to sit here and we're going to chat and we're going to put this together and we're going to have a good time and so that's what I'm really hoping to achieve in this video. Like in my last video though I will have something hidden within this video so keep an eye out for it and I'll tell you what it is at the end of the video and you can comment down below if you found it. So the first thing I have to do in the housewife pattern is obviously like I have to read the instructions so I know what I'm going to be doing. I've glanced through them. It's basically rectangles and squares that are being sewn together to make little pockets onto this like it's a rectangle sh like sheet sheet. It's a rectangle piece of fabric that's just curved at the top and then you can fold it up and tie it with some ribbon. So I went through my stuff and found what I like. So we are going to cut out the pattern and then put the pattern together and I'm cutting out the pieces here like this first one says tape to part two here and here is part two and at the top it says tape to part one so I'm just cutting these out right now um it does say cut one of lining and one for the exterior I know I want my exterior to be this beautiful like can you see it like this pretty it's like a vintage flowered fabric which I think is really really pretty I believe I got it from my grandmother. Uh, she gave me this huge like lot of fabric. She bought a sewing machine and had a ton of fabric and some like Barbie patterns. And like she was gonna try and see if she liked sewing. And she was like, no, this isn't for me. And so like she gave me all of that stuff which was really really nice and I believe this was one of the fabrics in it and I just think it's really really pretty and I really like it so I I want to use it for this I'll show those to you um, I think they'll work really well together my favorite color is green so there's probably gonna be a lot of green in this but who cares it's mine so uh, as far as like green goes, I have this green, like, I think it's called like Hound's Tooth. Is that only black and white or can it be just like the name of the like printed pattern that's on it? But this is uh, like two-toned green and it's really, really nice. I like it. It's a nice cotton. I also have, this is one of my favorites. This came from my grandmother too. And I think it's so cute. And I only have like a quarter yard of it. So I can't make anything out of it or not like a dress or anything, but it's these little chickens. Oh my gosh. 
blush so it's like this olive green I don't think it's coming across on the camera very well but it's like an olive green and they have these little blue and red chickens all over it so adorable so I want to use that and then I have a couple other pockets so I'm thinking this red would be really pretty like this is about all I have of it so I thought that would work with like the red chickens and I also have this now I bought this fabric and I made a brooch board and this is like the backing fabric of my brooch board which is really really nice the only thing I'm thinking is like the greens in this can you see kind of like the olive toned greens and red they work with like the chickens and stuff here um the thing is is there too much floral is there too much green is it actually all gonna work I don't know so I'm just cut out the pieces and get this pattern all situated and then I think I'm just gonna ar arrange everything on the fabrics and decide what I want to do and then we'll cut it out so once I have this cut out I'm gonna come back to you and we'll place it on the fabrics and figure out what's going on so I already cut out a green strip right here um, for my lining on the inside if I'm understanding this right like you're not really gonna see it except for like whenever you open up the pocket to stick something in so I'm not too worried about if it clashes with this because the underside is pretty light so you're not really gonna see like the green pattern like through that at all when it's together so I'm not too worried about it um I also have like this ivory linen tape that's in my stash so if I didn't mention before like all of these fabrics are from my stash I didn't go buy anything extra for it we're just gonna use what's available to us right now and um, a lot of my fabric shops right now because of quarantine are still on like reduced hours or still closed and so it's kind of hard to get to them so I've been working out of my stash for the last several months um, so we're just gonna use this and cut out all the pieces for this so this is actually my first 18th century anything it is something that I look forward to doing at some point. I have the patterns from, I believe it's Simplicity with Abby Cox, where she made an 18th century gown. And it also goes, like you can see more instructions and things in her 18th century dressmaking book that she wrote with American Duchess. And I really want the book so that I can do the patterns and make the gown that the pattern is. I saw the pattern at Joann's. They had it in my size. They had the undergarments and pinniers in my size. So I grabbed both patterns at the time and they've been sitting there for almost a year. <laughs> and so I'm wanting to dive into more historical sewing. This is kind of my introduction to 18th century. I am going to be sewing all of this by hand because machines weren't a thing then. Now, am I opposed to using machine? No, I use it all the time. It's my favorite way to sew. But I do want to just be in the mindset of what she would have made back then to help carry her sewing things around, what she would have stuck in her pocket to help her do the job that she needed to do. So I'm looking forward to just doing that in an authentic way. Now the ribbon that I'm using to close it is not an authentic like silk ribbon or cotton linen, cotton ribbon or a linen ribbon. It is a totally modern day cheap ribbon that I believe I bought from Walmart, but it's this like gold, which I think will work really, really well with kind of the yellow tones that I have going on with everything. So yeah. Um, let's see. What else? I also, ooh, also, I need a dress form. 
Speaking of which, I don't have one. And I truly believe, like, to help my sewing go to the next level, I need a, de a decent dress form. Now, I've been looking at several different kinds, some that you can, like, make yourself. So, like, plaster and cast or duct tape ones or, like, uh, bootstrap ones. Um, and I just haven't really come across anything that I'm loving. And once I add up, like how much it costs for me to purchase all of the materials to make one of those. It's not far off from me to order one. So the ones that I really want to order is a Uniquely You. And I found out my size and I found out what I'm gonna do. So now it's a matter of just like, either waiting for like my birthday or Christmas that hopefully somebody in my family will gift me one or saving up my money and purchasing one. But I really believe that like once I get a dress form, we're really going to see my sewing go to like a whole new level because I'm going to be able to do things in a way that I haven't been able to do on myself. Um, it's kind of hard to pin and take measurements on yourself in the mirror and make sure you get them right. It is possible. And I've been doing some of that with some of the garments that I've been making. So like my skirts and the petticoat and things like that, I I did those with and I mean, it works, it works. So there's that and I got, it says cut one of lining and one of exterior. So I cut out that floral fabric, which I just think, I still love it. I think it's so pretty. And that's gonna be my exterior. Now, I don't know if I wanna cut a second one of that for the lining, or if I want to do like that green, like that two-toned green on the inside right here. Like, oh, let me show, let me show you. So like these are the two together. So this would be the outside and like this would be the inside. And then you have these pocket pieces here, which I'm thinking could be like, let's move some stuff out of the way here. Can be these pieces right here, like the top and then like chickens stuff like does that work I don't know I'm not sure but I need four of them so hmm should I do a lining like should I do the lining and then like top piece here or top piece out of this hmm I don't know, decisions. All right, so this is what we're doing. So this is our lining piece, and then this is the top rounded piece. So we're just gonna set this up here like that, lined up with the top. And then I think it's at a quarter inch, but the instructions actually say eighth and inch that they're supposed to overlap. So we take this and it's just gonna overlap like that. And then we keep going down and we're gonna baste or whip stitch them along the bottom like each one so we'll whip stitch this along the bottom then we'll whip stitch this along the bottom and then the next one and the next one and as we go we'll get down here to the bottom and we'll attach the last one and we'll attach our wool piece and if there's actually any extra fabric we will just cut off however much excess is left over um, so let's get that started so honestly, I am starting to second guess this strip of green here as my lining, but like, you're not going to see it that much except for when you go to shove something in a pocket, 
So I'm just going to stick with it. I have it cut out. Um, I got the top piece pinned. I'm going to whip stitch that down real quick. Um, so looking at our sewing instructions here, like let me zoom in. It says using the hemming stitch, we should double fold an eighth to a quarter hem one long each pocket piece. So like this on all four, but then the last one is left raw. And that says because it will be at the bottom of the housewife. And so we're gonna leave this one raw. We're in which step whip stitch the tops and then we're going to running edge baste the three bottoms. So we're going to work on that right now. I'm actually going to press all of them and then pin them just so that they stay and So I got all those cut out and pressed. So now I'm going to go along and whip stitch the tops and base the bottoms and go about that. So I have a mixture of proper threads and not proper threads. But like I said before, I want to get rid of a lot of my like stash. So I'm using this Guterman's cotton thread that like matches my kind of like cream colors that I have going on here in that. So I'll use that on like the top piece and I'll probably use this on like my linen that goes around um, the outside and things like that. I have this one with those like blue, almost turquoise colored flowers. And I have this really like fun turquoise polyester thread. It's polyester cotton wrapped. It's like it's pretty and I think it'll serve the purpose for just whip stitching them and basting them down. And then I have this really pretty 
dark olive green that'll work with like these two. So I'm gonna work on that and be productive here. So I was watching another one of like I was watching Abby Cox. She had a video on like hand sewing and thimbles. And I absolutely loved it. And I love that it's good. It like taught me a lot like about the right needles and the function of those needles and how to use them properly and things like that. So I immediately turned around and went to my Amazon shop and found the right a package of needles for what I need to do <laughs> um, so that I'm doing it properly and well and it's constructed in the right manner. So I'm going to use a sharp number 10 that I have right now but I'm waiting for my other package to come in, so. All right, so my camera died on me and I'm not really sure where I was at, but I watched that video by Abby and immediately ordered the problem needles and I'm waiting for those to come in. So until then, the needle that I have is gonna have to do. So I am just like whip stitching this down right here, like just along this edge. And so I gotta do that with this one, this one, this, I guess you guys can't see them. The one that's in my hand, this one, I've gotta finish. And then I have these three that I have to whip stitch and running stitch. I finished this one and the running stitch along the bottom here before I realized that my camera died. So, sorry, didn't show that to you, but we're back now. So, I am really excited. I guess, maybe not excited, but I am looking forward to the fact that fall is coming around and that pumpkins are coming out and all the fun stuff and like the scarecrows and things like that. So what's your favorite time or your favorite thing about this time of year? Is it like carving pumpkins or dressing up or the fact that you've been sewing your costume for months or that you're putting it together at last minute or do you guys do like special parties? Like what do you guys do? Like what makes this either your most favorite or least favorite time of year? Like let me know down in the comments. Like it'd be really interesting to get to know you and what you do and do not enjoy to some degree. So um, this thread does not want to go on the needle. Got it. So should we do the running stitch first? Yeah, because then it's just faster. I'm gonna do that. So I'm actually going to work on these next few pieces. I'm gonna get these all done. And then we will move to the next step in our pattern here. So I look forward to seeing you in a second. Hey, welcome back. Day two. Um, so this is taking me, I'm at least on day two because yesterday I put a pause on it. My mother came and was like, hey, do you want to hang out? And I said, of course I do. So hello, kitty cat. Uh, so we went and did some fall like shoe shopping. We got food and the girls with us. It's a really nice time. Um, so I'm going to try and finish this today. Hopefully I get it done. I only have a few hours, so I mean, we should. Anywho, 
uh, I'm still attaching all of the pocket pieces with the whip stitch. That's bad. That's bad. These. Can you see them now? I'm attaching all of these with the whip stitch. So I have the chickens that I have to do and I have the little blue flowers I have to do and then we attach the little wool piece and then I think it's lining the bias binding and then you attach the ribbon. I think that's about it. So it shouldn't take us but the couple of hours that I have. So um anyways we went and hung out yesterday. It was really really nice. We went and got food and the girls got new shoes. It was really funny because we were walking into the shoe store and one of my daughters was like, yeah, I want a new pair of tennis shoes. And as we were walking in, like the soles busted out and I was, so we got our new shoes. Um, but she chose like these black Adidas shoes, but like the stripes that are on them are really, really cool. They have like an iridescent effect. So they go from like black to blue, uh, which she just found super cool. So she was really excited and wore them to school this morning. Um, so let's see here. What else? Um, oh, I was showing my mother, like I'm getting my hair done here soon for my birthday because I mean hello and I couldn't decide when I color my hair at the salon if I want to go like red because I love red hair red is one of my absolute like favorite hair colors I've worn it before um there's just a a special heart in my place for red hair I'm so jealous of it but my other option, which I've never done before, but I think would be really, really fun, is this like darker, like it's closer to my natural, like dark brown that we have, but it has purple tints to it. So like I was talking with my girls and my mom and my husband and I was like which one should I do like we're gonna still mix in like my natural hair color and like some of the grays that I have coming in with it so that as it grows out it all works but like they're all leaning towards the purple or you know the purple tinted brown and so I might do it I've I think it'd be really, really fun. We're headed into winter, so why not, you know? Um, anyways, let's see here. My daughter, my youngest daughter, she got to play goalie on her soccer team. She was super excited about that. It was really, really funny because they were playing their game and she was like super ready for the ball. And she was like, I got this. And it's coming, it's coming at her, it's coming. And then all of a sudden she's like, no, <laughs> and like hides and ducks. And I was like, oh my gosh, why'd you duck? Like, this is what you've wanted. And well, she was like, I was ready. And then it came flying at my face and I said, no, <laughs> it's, um, but I mean, regardless, they won their game. So I'm really proud of her. She loves soccer. Soccer's her jam. So We've actually debated on putting her in like this soccer academy that's in town, but oh my God, it's so expensive. Um, I was not prepared for the number that they threw at me. I mean, I was expecting to pay a pretty penny, but not that many pretty pennies. So... Oh no, girl may have to just play in the neighborhood, practice those skills, but we're trying. 
Uh, let's see here, along the line of sports, my oldest, she loves basketball. Their season's been canceled. Her team was actually supposed to go to like, so last year I homeschooled my girls. A couple of years prior, I've homeschooled the girls. But this year, since, you know, pandemics and stuff, um, all of their activities have been canceled. They're done. They're not doing anything. They're not getting together. So my girls were like, can we please go to the public school? Like, we want to see friends. My oldest plays drums, or she's at least learning to play drums. Um, and she's like, I still want my band. Like, I still want to be able to play my my drum and like I want to have some of these opportunities so I said sure why not um now I didn't just e easily give up like our homeschooling like they had to make convincing arguments as to why they thought they should have this opportunity and you know I I've raised some intelligent opinionated girls <laughs> so I let them go this year uh with conditions so my oldest loves basketball and her team last year her homes like homeschool basketball team was planning on going to the homeschool nationals and it was like a week away they were ready they were practicing they were geared up for it and it was canceled so she was really really upset like they worked really hard and so this year she was like i i want to see people i want to be able to do things like please let me go and so she's there right now having fun learning her band stuff making friends um, things like that. So I'm excited for them. She gets to do things that like homeschool kids don't typically get to do. Like she gets to go to like the home, um, homecoming things that are coming up for too long. And she'll get to do the marching band. And we have like a military prep program. Uh, I think it's pretty common, but here it's J-R-O-T-C and like she's really looking forward to being a part of that next year and so there's just a lot of positives right now for for them um so all right I got that pocket down let's get this next one I'm gonna get this flower down and this wool on and then I'll come back with you for like the next step. I'll show you how it's going. And yeah, so see you in a sec. All right, so I got the little pockets on. So this part right here is actually the extra that it's saying you might have. It says depending on how small your hems are and how much you overlap, you may have extra bottom trim as needed. So I'm gonna just snip that off right there or wait shouldn't you like attach the exterior too and like trim them all at the same time how does that work hmm i might have to just make a call because i don't see anything in here about that Touch the bottom of the last pocket using a back stitch. Well, I used a whip stitch. And when I put the bias binding on, I use a back stitch then. So let's see here. We're gonna jump ahead a little bit and find out what's going on. Place the exterior piece of the house weave housewife so that the lining is sandwiched between the outer fabric and the pockets. You may find it necessary to trim around the edges for a clean finish. Sandwiched between the fabric. Wouldn't that just be easier to say put them wrong sides together? 
Oh well. Baste around the edge of the entire piece, taking care around the top corners of each pocket. Okay. Pin the binding in place, starting. Okay, so I'm just gonna put my lining on the back side here. So here it is. I'm gonna lay it right side on the table, wrong side to the wrong side of my floral fabric. So wrong sides together like that. So there's my outside, there's my inside. I'm gonna pin it and then I'm gonna trim off this excess. So like they're the exact same length. And then I will pin my bias binding in place and back stitch that. I think that's how I'm gonna do it. So, you know, each project is always different. Like, make it work for you. Make it however is gonna be easiest for you to do. Like, don't, if there's something that seems too difficult, like, don't stress yourself out about it. Uh, just try and take it in stride. If it's too frustrating, walk away for a little bit. Maybe after a breather or getting a meal, watching a movie, a good night's sleep, you can come back with like a clear head and read the instructions again. You'll be like, that's okay. Now I get it. And I'll do it that way. Or you know what? That makes no sense to me. So I'm going to do it this way. <laughs> uh, just make the project work for you. Don't get stressed out. Don't make yourself cry. Just enjoy your craft and what you're creating. And so, yeah, that's my advice for you. It's just enjoy it. Just have fun. So I got it all pinned so that my flaps keep, they don't keep flapping down. I can trim off this little excess here. So don't cut your stitches. I think I did a couple. Oh well. Yeah. Definitely cut a couple right there. Oh well. We'll be alright. So let's see here. We got some bias binding next. Where should I start? Like at the bottom? Should we start attaching at the bottom? We shouldn't start attaching in a corner though, should we? No, that would be a nightmare. Okay, so I'm gonna just start bottom middle. Now mine is like super tiny bias binding. Um, I hope this works. We'll see. But how I have no idea how to do these corners, like how to fold for these corners. It just says take care. What does it say? It says then again you may find paste around edges, taking care around the top corners of each pocket. Hmm. So like. <gasps> Aha! There it is. You see that? I am mighty. Okay. So let's get this all pinned in place because it's going to take quite a bit of concentration for me to line this up. All right. So I have my bias binding on everywhere. Tons and tons of pins so it doesn't puck or, or wrinkle. But I'm back here at this corner and I'm going to show you how I think the corner is supposed to be worked out. Now, don't take my word as like solid, this is how you do it. But I think this is how it's supposed to work. We're gonna find out. So I just went to the corner here with my bias binding and then just kind of like popped it up. You see that? So like, I'm gonna take this part that popped up and fold it this way and going to pin it on one side of that flap 
like right there. And then I'm gonna move this one over and I'm gonna pin it on the other side like that. Now, I don't know what to do with this. Like once we turn, I may have to like clip it or something. I don't know, I'll deal with that later. But I think that's how we're going to approach it. And that's how I did it over here on this corner. So hopefully it works out for me. We're just gonna line this up here. Snip that off. Here we go. Pin, pin, pin. And then we can start our back stitching. So boom. Yeah. There it is. Nice and tidy.
we got all of our bias tape on and stuff so I need to trim the edges and then turn it so like I need to trim the edge here and then flip this over and then like to the back side and whip stitch it down and I don't know after that I haven't read that far ahead in the instructions so let's let's do that but I have honestly no idea if I did these corners right I don't know we'll find out um don't come at me in the comments about not wearing a thimble I know I'm supposed to wear one it would be best for me uh, but you know what I'm trying to build up those seamstresses like natural thimbles those calluses so let me live my life anyways let's see here um, I guess I mean I don't know if you could see it earlier but like let's see will my camera focus on it can you see the stitches there um they're not real even they're not great but quite honestly I haven't done a whole lot of hand stitching just yet so I'm learning and as I do it I'll get better and I'll learn my tension more and like my spacing more and things like that so like it'll get there like I said it'll get there uh, that's part of the reason as to why I wanted to hand stitch this whole thing is because I want my historical sewing when I decide to like make some of the bigger projects like the gowns and um, like anything that's going to need hand stitching, hand finishing, hand tailoring like my technique is at least better than it is now and getting better for those projects so like I feel like the best way to start doing that is start with like little things like this and just keep practicing and doing it it helps build your patience and everything else so that's one of the main reasons I wanted to do this. Now, is this completely 100% historically accurate? No, I know that. Like, they didn't have these kind of printed cottons. This is a wool blend, like, I get it. But I'm working from my stash, remember? It's what I had. Um, some of it is cotton thread, some of it is polyester thread. So I know it's not 100% accurate, but I did want to be authentic as I could be with this project so I'm enjoying it I'm having a lot of fun I think I did one quarter much neater than I did the other um, like this one can you see how nice and neat that turned this one is a little more wrinkled like I had I had some problems and I honestly couldn't remember how I did it over here but you know you live and learn so I need to press this bias binding so that I can fold it over and get it pinned in place and then uh, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to slip stitch it into place or whip stitch it into place on the outside um, you know Let's see here. What does it say? That's typically what you do when you don't know. You look it up, right? So, I got it. At some point, it ended up on the floor. So, let's see here. Exterior piece. Take care of the corners. Got it. For... Turn the housewife over, fold the binding over to the pocket side, encasing the raw edge. Slip stitch! 
Okay, I can do that. And then for the tie, fold a small tape or ribbon in half, stretch the folded edge to the top, rounded edge of a housewife using several very tight whip stitches, some old small tape or ribbon, and half stitch the folded edge to the top of the rounded edge using sturdy whip stitch. Fill with sewing notions, accessories, or whatever small object you may need. Enjoy. Well, thank you. I think I will. So, um, I've got it flipped. I'm going to go press it so that it's all in place. Why am I so far back? Come here. Okay, so we got it all done. Here it is, bias binding on. I'm gonna get it pressed into place and then I will fold it over like this. I'll pin it and slip stitch that down. Set. Hey, look at that corner. That's a pretty corner. Uh, we'll slip stitch it and then once it's down, uh, the ribbon up there and we'll be done. We'll have, we'll have a housewife. So let's do it. All right. So I have everything pressed and turned and pinned. And so I'm slip stitching this into place and I'm debating. I said I'm slip stitching it. I'm not. I'm really just kind of like whipping it into place, to be honest with you. I'm just kind of like on a time crunch right now. So just crying. I mean, I'm doing teeny tiny whip stitches so that it's in there like nice and tight, but I'm not trying to hide the fact that they're stitching on it. I'm in this corner right here. The camera is not wanting to focus on anything, but like, I get in here, let's show you. No, not at all. Okay. Well, I'm stitching this down. Guys have any suggestions on like another project you'd like to see, like, sound off down in the comments. Let me know. I want to, like, keep you guys engaged and give you guys something that you enjoy seeing. So, I mean, I think that definitely comes back to just, like, talking to you guys and seeing what you want to see and seeing what you, you know, like, finding out what you like and uh, what you're learning and things like that. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. I look forward to interacting with you guys. Uh, anyways, we'll have a lot of stuff like this, like of just working and learning and chatting. Uh, I definitely like filming in this manner a whole lot more than like I did my previous video. So hopefully if you like this too, you'll stick around with me. But I'm going to get this into place and see you in a moment to attach our ribbon. All right, so we've got the Binding all stitched on, ready to go. And I got my ribbon tacked on. I didn't film attaching the ribbon quite. Honestly, I had a really important phone call, so I stitched it on while I was on the phone call, so I didn't get it recorded. But we got that tacked on. I didn't do any kind of like fancy stitches or anything. I just did some prick stitches back and forth, got it on there. And so what we do, is we just roll it up like that. It's so cute. And then we're gonna tie it. So I actually really enjoyed making this. It was easy and uh, 
just pretty. And I'm sure this will make it so much easier for me to carry my sewing things when I'm like on the go, when I take the girls to doctor's appointments or soccer games or soccer practice rather, not a game. I want to watch a game, but uh, whatever it is, that's going to have me sit in there for a minute and I want to take my stuff with me. So like, here we go. Is it upside down? Should it go this way? Huh? Well, I tied the bow to get the other way. But I really like it. I think it turned out really, really well. It's really pretty uh, untied. I like that the ribbon works with like the little yellow flowers peeking out. I love all of my fun fabrics on the inside. It just makes me smile. So I hope you have as much fun making your housewife as I had making mine and visiting with you guys and getting to know you. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next week here in my sewing room. If you haven't already, then hit the subscribe right down there. Um, if you'd like to send me an email or anything, it's all down in the description. Hit the thumbs up button for me. Thumbs up button for me. It really helps my channel out. It just lets me know what you guys enjoy. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you guys. And I look forward to seeing you next week. I hit a daisy within this video. Uh, daisies are my favorite flower. It's nearing the end of summer and headed into autumn within the next couple of days. So uh, my ode to summer is my favorite flower. So I went ahead and hit a daisy in this video. If you find it, leave a daisy comment down below, hit the thumbs up, whatever you'd like to do to let me know that you found the treasure. Until then, bye.